welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samas in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया in this lecture we shall study the process of speech production described in the paninian grammatical tradition whose main source is paniniya shiksha shiksha refers to a genre of texts which talk about the sounds their features the places of articulations efforts of articulations etc this is paniniya shiksha talking about the process of speech production and these are the verses atma बुद्ध्या समेत्या मनो युक्ते विवक्षया मन कायाग्निमाहती सप्रेरयति मारुत मारुतस्तूरसी चरन मंद्र जनयति स्वर सोदीर्णो मूर्ध्यहत वक्रमापद्यमुत वर्णा जनयते रिपीट आत्मा बुद्ध्या समेत्या मनो युक्ते विवक्षया मन कायाग्निमाहती सप्रेरयति मारुत मारुतस्तूरसी चरन मंद्र जनयति स्वर सोदीर्णो मूर्ध्यहत वक्रमापद्यमुत वर्णा जनयते इफ वी एनलाइज these verses we note down the following eight stages of speech production described there the first one is atma buddhya samityarthan second one is mano yungte vivakshaya the third one is manakaya agni mahanti fourth one is saprerayati marutam The fifth one is Marutasturasi Charan Mandram Janayati Swaram. Sixth one is Sodirno Murdhvi Hataha. Seventh one is Vaktram Apadya Marutaha. And eighth one is Varnan Janayate. The eighth stage. is the outer part of the process of speech production this is audible and it is this audible part of this entire process which is generally recognized as speech the first stage atma buddhya samityarthan is at the back end and that is extremely vital for the eighth stage to happen 
In fact, there is a correspondence between the first stage and the eighth stage. Now, the varanas which are thus produced, if they are to be produced together, they are to be collected together in the first stage by the Atma. Now we shall study what these stages mean. However, we note that the first two stages, they refer to the cognitive stage of speech production and the remaining one describe the physical part of the process of speech production ending in the production of the sounds. It is important to remember that the first stage should also be considered to be called as speech as the eighth stage which is audible is nothing but an expression of this first stage Atma Buddha Samityarthan. How? Let us study one by one. The first stage is Atma Buddha Samityarthan. There are four words in this particular line. Atma, which means a soul and the important property of this soul is that it is animate. Then we have buddhya, in which the main word is buddhi, which means the intellect and buddhya means by the intellect. Artha stands for meaning and arthan is the dvitiya to the meanings. Sametya is derived from sam plus a plus e with the, with the suffix ya to which the is also added. And strictly speaking, this the is added to the verbal root e. So now, after having put together all these individual meanings, we get the meaning of the line in the following manner. Soul having collected the meanings together. This is the meaning of this line. Now, how does the soul collect the meanings together by the intellect? with the help of the intellect. Let us study that one by one in the form of this particular diagram. This is the speech production from the point of view of the speaker. And here we go from the cognitive apparatus, this is the first stage to the audible speech, which is the final stage. We will show the correlation between the cognitive stage and the audible speech and the remaining internal processes, they are taken care of internally. However, the audible speech has direct correspondence with the cognitive stage in which the meanings get collected. Now, the cognitive apparatus of the human being is considered to possess the spaces for Artha and Shapta, also known as Arthakasha and Shabdakasha. Now, as part of the Arthakasha, there are three subparts lexical meaning, relational meaning, and the co occurrence of these meanings. Lexical meaning is also subgrouped as verbal meaning and nominal meaning 
and relational meaning is subgrouped as verb noun meaning and noun noun relation meaning. Co-occurrence is the co-occurrence of all these individual elements. This is all part of the space of Artha, also known as Arthakasha. Now this corresponds to the space for Shabda, which is known as Shabdakasha. Lexical meaning corresponds to lexical items. The verbal meaning corresponds to verbal lexical item and nominal meaning corresponds to a nominal lexical item. The relational meaning, verb noun meaning is corresponding with the verb noun relation suffix and the noun noun meaning corresponds to the noun noun relation suffix. And of course the co-occurrence of the meanings corresponds to the co-occurrence of the shabdas of the sounds of the elements which are going to be produced. This is still at the level of shabdakasha which is part of the cognitive apparatus. So this is the internal and the back end process of the process of speech production. Now in this case the lexical items they are theoretically infinite and are referred to here as R1, R2 and R3. The relation suffixes are mentioned here as T1, T2 and T3 and they are finite in number. The co-occurrence gets expressed in the form of the plus signs over here which is also finite in number. Now the Shabdakasha which is part of the cognitive apparatus gives rise to the these Shabdas which are audible, which are part of the audible speech. So this Shabdakasha gives rise to the respective elements and thereafter this kind of speech with these elements added to each other and processed are audible to the, to the listener as well as to the speaker. This is how the speech production works. Now the lexical meaning which has got the nominal meanings, these nominal meanings also can be classified further with simple and compound. So compound meanings are part of these nominal meanings which are part of the lexical meaning and compounds are part of the nominal lexical items which are part of the Shabda Kasha, the space of the words in the cognitive apparatus. So this is how the Samasas get produced in general and same thing will happen with Avyayibhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva. They will be produced in this particular manner. There will be a nominal meaning of Avyayibhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva as part of the lexical meaning which is part of the Arthakasha corresponding to which there will be these nominal words in the Shabdakasha as the lexical items in the Shabdakasha which will give rise to the further processes and finally it will be able to express this cognitive apparatus in the form of these audible speech elements. This is how the Samasas get produced. This is from the point of view of the speaker. Now what happens in the apparatus of the listener? In now what happens in the apparatus of the listener? So from the point of view of a hearer, this is what happens. So audible speech is the input 
the audible speech is in this particular form where r are infinite the t which is corresponding to the relation suffix they are finite in number and the plus signs are finite in number they correspond to the co-occurrence of these elements now these co-occurrences they give rise to the meanings which are relational meanings now the root roots correspond to the lexical items verbal as well as nominal as part of the shabdakasha the terminations correspond to the relation suffixes namely verb noun relations and noun noun relations they express these relations relational meaning then the co-occurrence of these elements corresponds to the co-occurrence of these elements in the shabdakasha now this shabdakasha then takes it forward to the arthakasha in which the lexical items they get corresponding lexical meaning the relation suffixes they get the relational meaning and the co-occurrence of the shabdas are related to the co-occurrence of the meaning and then they are joined together and finally the hearer correspond hearer comprehends the content of the audible speech this is how the hearer's point of view can be explained as far as the speech production process is concerned so the cognitive apparatus plays a very important role in all this particular process and as we said earlier the cognitive apparatus as far as the speaker is concerned is the main element and the audible speech is just an expression of the cognitive element in the cognitive apparatus of the speaker now the correlation of arthakasha and shabdakasha can be shown in the following manner so artha sangraha in the arthakasha is correlated with vakya where vakya is cognized as one unit and artha vigraha corresponds with the pada or word in the shabdakasha where the vakya is dissolved in the form of padas so this is the artha vigraha then these padas are further divided into prakriti and pratyayas and this is called artha graha of prakriti roots and pratyaya which is the suffix so artha sangraha artha vigraha artha graha these are the elements in the artha kasha which are correlated with vakya pada prakriti and pratyaya in the shabda kasha now this is the correlation example as far as the artha sangraha is concerned ram goes to a village this is one unit and then artha vigraha is the following doer rama object village the action of going in the present tense whose agent is third person singular an artha graha would be rama village object action of going present tense agent third person and singular meanings of prakriti and pratyaya corresponding to this in the artha kasha we have vakya as part of the shabda kasha which is ramo gramam gachati and in the shabda kasha we have the padas corresponding to the artha vigraha ar ramaha plus gramam plus gachati 
and then corresponding to the artha graha in the artha kasha we have prakriti and pratyaya namely the roots and the suffixes rama su grama am gama ti this is how the prakriti and pratyayas as well as padas and vakya are correlated with the artha graha artha vigraha and artha sangraha this is how shabda kasha is correlated with the artha kasha which is part of the cognitive level of the process of speech production which is expressed by the audible speech so the sentence or the vakya thus produced has got a particular structure we are talking about the sentence in sanskrit now here are some abbreviations used and their explanation r stands for root p stands for pratipadika t stands for termination and v stands for dhatu and o s stands for other suffix so here we have four equations first we have rp plus pt 1 to 3 this is one element plus rp plus pt 4 to 21 this is the second element and then rb plus os plus vt 1 to 18 this is the third element all these put together generate a sentence this can be further explained in the following manner where the order is shown to be less significant so one a could would be rv plus os plus vt 1 to 18 occupying the first position in the sentence plus rp plus pt 1 to 3 occupying the second position plus rp plus pt 4 to 21 occupying the third position in the sentence this is the primary structure of a sanskrit sentence the other structure that is possible in sanskrit is the following rp plus pt 4 to 6 plus rv plus os especially here plus vt 9 to 18 and we can write this as 2a where we change the order and we say rv plus os namely here plus vt 9 to 18 plus rp plus pt 4 to 6 this is the second structure in sanskrit these are the primary sentence structures in sanskrit now these sentences can be rewritten in the following manner rp which is pratipadika which is made up of verb and kridanta suffix so rb plus k plus pt 1 to 3 plus rp which is made up of root pratipadika plus ta that is the dhita suffix plus pt 4 to 21 plus rv 1 to 2000 plus os plus vt 1 to 18 1a simply changes the order in which these are to be written and 2 is rp plus pt 4 to 6 plus rv plus os plus vt 9 to 18 and 2a is the reverse order of the same so this is the sentence structure and compounds they are part of these elements rp 
here and RP here. So this RP can be and this RP can be formed by just as RB plus K. We can also show that this RP is formed by the process of compounding. So what is the status of Samasa? Samasa is a process which is quite similar to a sentence. So just as we corresponded sentence with Artha Sangraha, we can also correspond Samasa with Artha Sangraha. And word form is Pratipadika which is the root, nominal root. Now in the dissolution of Samasa, we use the word Vigraha which is Artha Vigraha and the word form where Padas are interrelated. So this Vigraha is also referred to as Vyasa in comparison with the word Samasa. So Vyasa consists of V plus Asa plus A and Samasa consisted of Sam plus Asa plus A and V indicates in different directions. So Vyasa means the action of throwing out in different directions or differently and Samasa means the action of throwing out together. So when the words are thrown out independently, separately, that is what is known as Vyasa and when they are thrown out together, that is what is known as Samasa. Here are some observations. The decision to combine certain meaning elements to form one sentence meaning is taken by the speaker which is part of the Arthakasha. The decision to combine certain verbal elements to form one sentence corresponding to the sentence meaning is taken by the speaker and that, that is part of the Shabdakasha. According to this decision of the speaker, certain meaning elements and corresponding verbal elements remain interconnected. Such interconnected meanings are further merged into each other and one unit is formed as per the decision of the speaker which is part of the Arthakasha. And then such corresponding interconnected verbal elements are further merged into one another and one unit is formed as per the decision of the speaker. This is also part of the Shabdakasha. Samasa and Samasartha are linked to Vakya and Vakyaartha in the respective parts of Arthakasha as well as Shabdakasha. This is very much true as far as Avyayi Bhava, Bahubrihi and Dvandva are concerned. In conclusion, we can say that the cognitive stage acts as the cause for the audible speech units to be produced collectively, Samasa. By default, meaning and verbal form of the Samasa are linked to the Vakya and Vakyartha. Samasa is linked to Sangraha and Vyasa is linked to Vigraha. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.